I'm going to go through, and now that I've put a beam in there in my simple little frame, I'm going to put a foundation under it. I'd like to actually have some sort of foundation so that, yeah, you know, I can't just have that steel column coming down to the ground, all the weight that's on it. Well, actually, it'll create a little local failure in the ground. It'll sort of, the ground will go whoosh and sploosh out the sides, something like that, because you have too much weight there, you'll exceed the bearing capacity. So what I need to do is actually put a, some sort of a pad underneath there that'll distribute the weight coming down in that column to a broader area, less than the bearing capacity of the soil. So I can come on back over here. And in Revit, you'll find there's actually different column types there, or foundation types. There's an isolated type, a wall type, and a slab type. I'm going to go for the isolated foundation. That's sort of what I typically put. Uh, well, let's go take a look. Okay, let me go out to structural. I'll say foundations. I'll make this footing rectangular, the one I want to work with. You may not have had that. I mean, I leaned out this file before we got started, so I might have made it a little too lean. Okay, I'm going to connect it right into the bottom there. Zoom on out. And I'll do the same thing over here. Right in there. See if I can snap to that. Again, it's always useful to do a little bit of orbiting. Just make sure things are really connected the way you think they are. Zoom out. Zoom out. Again, orbiting is really just about confirming visually that things seem to be connected. Beautiful. Let me zoom to fit. Okay, so I have what looks like my little model. I could have created this model in Revit architecture or structure. So far I haven't done anything special in structure. I've just done everything that you can do on either side. Okay. As we're going through and doing steel structures, a very common thing happens, and it has to do with the steel construction. Uh, you think about the beam heights, and there's actually a little adjustment we typically make. Here's what the story is. Okay. In a concrete structure, often the concrete beam together into sort of a single element. So concrete beams are often at the same height as the floor level. With steel beams, we tend to always offset them just a little bit. We kind of just pull them down just a hair because what we want to have happen is we want the beams to basically run underneath the floor decking and then the floor to be on top of those beams. Okay? So what I'm going to do is just a little bit different. I'm going to grab all those beams I'll take a look at their instance properties, because I'm going to go through and put a little floor deck on top of this, but I want to allow just a little bit of room for that deck. Oh, let me go into this. I'll change them all to be moment frames. The new ones didn't have that set by default. In fact, even down in here, let me change those to be fixed also. But what I want to do is this start and end level offset. I actually want to drop those beams down just a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually drop them minus three inches to allow just a little bit of room for the floor to be on top of them. Okay, and it's not a huge difference. If you zoom on in there, you can see the difference. It's just dropped a little. Okay, but it's just enough for what we want to do. Let me zoom on out again. Okay, before I put a big old floor across this entire span, it is quite common that instead of just putting the floor across here, I'll put some intermediate beams or some joists in there that are going to also uh, help support the floor. That's a beam system, so I can choose the beam system tool. I can, what I'll do is actually pick the supports. The reason I like to pick the supports is then if I actually pick the height, if I pick the beams, okay, what is it? You know, it's going to sort of keep everything associated with those beams. So in case the beams move, things will move with it. Here we are. Notice that it's also dropping things down that same three inches. I think. Let's go ahead and say finish the beam system. Actually, I take that back. 
No, they're not automatically dropped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just a little bit of adjustment to that beam system. I'll choose the beam system. There we go. There's the beam system. Let's take a look at its properties. It has that same issue of being able to drop it, the three inches. Then I also have the spacing issue. Right now everything's spaced out at six feet. Let me go ahead and say, oh, now these are only going to be about three feet. Okay, and now we're looking good. Okay, so I've gone through and I've created the beams and I've created a beam system to span between. Final thing I want to do here in terms of modeling things in terms of Revit is I'll put a structural floor on this thing. For the structural floor, let me go through and I'll choose the end points or the end beams. Again, picking supports. And I can finish that floor. And you'll see that floor has a top a property. Here it's three inches of lightweight concrete on top of a two inch metal deck. I actually might need to bring my beams down to five inches to really make that work. <laughs> but you'll see that oh, we're just a little bit below. Actually, let me just go through and just check that to be certain. When all else fails, draw a section. So we can verify our heights. Let me zoom on in. It's not showing me very much detail, so I'm going to turn up the level of detail. There we go. You'll see my beams are actually too high right now. Let me see if I can grab that whole system. What I want to do is again go back over there. It looks like it's three plus two, so what I really need to do is drop those all down to five. So again, let me see if I can get these. Zoom out. I'm trying to get them, but it's not. Let me go to wireframe, see if I can do it that way. There we go. Let me change those. I didn't drop them quiet enough. Let me drop it to minus five inches. You know, think about why it's not letting me do things right now. My computer's just sort of complaining to me. There we go. Now let me go back and take a look in that section again and see. That's looking better. So that deck is actually sitting on top of the beams now, and that's really what I have in mind. Beautiful. So go through, and if you build an accurate model, it'll do a better job of doing the analysis. You have to have an accurate model about how things are actually going to be built.